Now, regarding acupuncture and herbal diagnosis, every patient that you have would have several diagnoses. Now, a lot of people, uh, when you go to school, you learn to have one diagnosis for acupuncture and herbs. I disagree with that. What you should have is you should have multiple diagnoses. For example, a person might have spleen chi deficiency, he might have liver chi stagnation, he might have phlegm excess, and he might also have spleen yang disorder as well. And so you should understand that you are treating all of these things because in school, school unfortunately is not the real world. Okay, you have to understand that patients are complex creatures and as a result have multiple types of, uh, of disorders. And there's a separate ac acupuncture diagnosis, okay? For example, if someone comes in and they're overweight, there's an issue with the spleen and you need to treat the spleen channel and treat the acupuncture points accordingly on that channel as well as the stomach channel, all right? If there's a lot of stress, you might consider uh, treating the liver channel, okay, and go on from there. Anyway, I want you to understand, points need to focus on movement and transport and sedation in general, okay, because acupuncture's basic function is not tonification, but it is borrowing from healthy channels and then going into weaker channels, or acupuncture is for sedating excesses, whereas herbs and food you're adding to the system and thereby tonifying. And this differentiation is very important. It's the real world, not the school uh, way of teaching you, okay? And you should also look at herbs. Herbs, of course, are based on the diagnosis of symptoms, the tongue and the pulse, and you have to take that into consideration. Acupuncture does not require you for, to do that. And when it comes through the channels, I suggest that you do Usher diagnosis. In other words, you palpate the channels and see which are the sensitive points, all right? And then consider. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to teach you some different type of acupuncture, okay? But uh, before I begin, I'll go over some basics. Acupuncture treatment summary. Identify always the channel involved. If you know where the channel is, okay, you know what to treat. Okay, and then balance the channel with intelligent choice of points. Now, intelligent choice of points is not so apparent. You have to be taught to think like that. For example, Ying spring points are to treat inflammation. Okay, Shu stream points are to move, and they're also for joint pain. Okay, Hussey points are for digestive process, right? And so you might want to consider that. You're blocking my. Uh, <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, treat the master dong. With, with master dome points, you can use the five shoe points and you can use the she cleft points. All right, so uh, let's move on and let's talk. Uh, I'm gonna introduce a new type of acupuncture treatment. Uh, Miriam Lee stimulated me because she came up with uh, Miriam Lee's 10 great needles. Basically, they're bilateral LI4 and LI11, lung seven, stomach 36, and I believe it's uh, spleen six. Okay, I thought that's good, but the thing is, those are five points and you do them bilaterally and they're 10 great needles. Kind of painful uh, to do and also they're kind of all over the place. I think it's, it's a fine treatment for beginners. Uh, however, I'm going to give you and introduce to you my, my 10 needles. It's called uh, Dr. Chu's WTH acupuncture prescription. Now some of you are probably thinking, WTH? What does WTH stand for? Well, exactly. That's exactly what it stands for. What the heck? Right? What the heck is going on here with this patient? Right? You need to talk to the patient and you need to see uh, this is a good prescription for them because why? You're kind of puzzled as to what to do. You need to do a balance for them. And this is uh, my version of the, the global balance. You could say that this is my version of the 10 great needles. Okay? But it has a lot of bearing on modern acupuncture and modern society. For example, people are generally stressed and because they don't eat well, uh, they, they have a prob probably poor diet and nutrition because of that, all right? So on the left side, you would use the lower three emperors and I'll introduce the locations for them, don't worry. Uh, there's also 
you would needle stomach 36 and 37. And on the right side, you do master dong points, ho ying, ho zu, liver 6, and then GB 34 and 39. Okay? The reason why I want those is because I'm focusing on the liver and the gallbladder, spleen and stomach. Because in basically in today's society, it's liver chi stagnation, which leads to liver overacting on the stomach and the spleen, causing an imbalance of the muscles and of the digestive system, leading to health disorders. And this continuously goes on, and you'll see that my formula makes a lot of sense. And of course, I'm going to introduce a lot of modifications to my herbal formulas. All I can say is, you guys try my WTH formula. Yes, it was known as WTF in my seminars, but uh, for this uh, webinar, I'm calling it the WTH protocol, okay? So take a look and try it and use it in the clinic. I'd like to hear your feedback on it, and let's have some fun with it, and you'll see what we do. So we're gonna move on. All the needles are perpendicular insertion. I use a WIMP gauge, a 38 gauge, okay? And I generally use half twin, one twin, and 1.5 twin needles that I use in my clinic, okay? Most commonly, I use one twin 38 gauge needle. You insert a perpendicular, don't have to turn, don't have to stimulate, don't have to go for the ashu or uh, the chi sensation, and you retain them for 28.8 minutes. If you don't know why, uh, just round it up to 30 minutes and that's fine. Uh, otherwise, go to my seminars and you'll know all about uh, why. All right, let's look at Sha San Huang. Those are the three points on the spleen channel. The first one is Shen Guan, which is 1.5 Chun below spleen 9, uh, which is also called uh, Tian Huang Fu in Master Dong's terminology. There's also Di Huang, which is uh, 4 Chun above spleen 6. And finally, there's Ren Huang, which is actually the TCM spleen 6. However, all of these points are along the border of the tibia. So you must know that uh, they're very close to the bone, all right? They're not in between uh, where you would find them in TCM. They would be right along the uh, medial border of the tibia. So just to let you know, all right? Ho Ying and Ho Zhu points are basically Master Dong's version of liver two and liver three. Ho Ying is found a half trend posterior to liver 2, or the TCM liver 2. And Hozu is located at the junction of the first and second metatarsal bones on the foot. All right? So you'll be able to find this point very easily. All right? And with practice, it's basically your liver 2 and liver 3. So let's go with the first disorder, hypertension. Hypertension is blood pressure greater than 130 over 90. And... Uh, what happens is uh, you have uh, other signs and symptoms like headaches, fatigue, confusion, vision problems, chest pain, difficulty breathing, and irregular heartbeat, okay? When you go to the Western medical doctor, they give you diuretics or they give you other things like propranolol or low tensor, other types of uh, drugs. You might also have uh, complications with hypertension. That would be blood in the urine. And untreated hypertension can lead to serious diseases like what? Stroke heart disease, kidney failures, and eye problems, okay? And you can look this all up on WebMD. And so for hypertension, you would use my acupuncture, my WTH prescription, but you can also add the points, yin tang and du 20. Now, yin tang and du 20 combination in Master Dong's acupuncture is known to calm the shen. And so we use this combination to relax the individual who might have too much stress and again, you focus in on the basic points that we're using, all right? Again, left side, the lower three emperors and stomach 36 and 37. On the right side is Master Dong's liver two and liver three, or what we call Ho Ying, Ho Zhu. And then you would also use liver six, which is the Xi cleft point of the liver channel, and use GB34 and 39, all right? GB34 is good for flexibility, and GB39 is the command point of marrow, so it relaxes and calms the mind. For hypertension, I recommend a combination formula. Perhaps uh, if you're using powders, you can use 50-50, Long Dan Xie Gan Tang, and Tian Ma Go Tang Yin. Okay, you can combine these formulas together and use it to treat hypertension. I had one case of a woman coming into my clinic 
she was 140 over 90, sometimes uh, 150 over 110. And I gave her a combination of uh, long dan she gan tang and tia ma go tang yin. Within one week, her blood pressure was normal at 110 over, over 70. So very good. Uh, of course, hypertension in Chinese medicine, we have to look at it, is what? Liver fire or liver yang rising or liver qi stagnation. And because liver qi stagnation is robbing the kidneys of energy, then we know it can lead to ki kidney and liver yin deficiency, which is causing the liver yang to rise. All right? So you could consider using qi zhi di huang tang or jiao wei xiao yao wan. Right? These are also very good formulas to cool down the patient. Now, a lot of patients would say, well, you know, I buy uh, some prescription drugs. I have a copay. It's only $10 or $5. But then if you keep explaining to them how they are damaging their internal organs, particularly their liver and kidney, they might consider moving into this. And then if they adopt some lifestyle changes, they probably won't have hypertension anymore. So uh, there's also another big issue, which uh, certain diuretics and certain hypertensive drugs have an unwanted side effect of impotence. Yes, males, you don't want to take this type of drugs because why? It will cause impotence. So. Uh, most men, male patients will say, what? No, I'm not going to take that drug. Forget about it. So.